Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And I'll start with just a couple of announcements. My, I have a lot of stuff going on for health professionals who are looking to flourish in independent practice. Uh, one of them is the Food Over Medicine License Program, which lets you represent us, marketing memberships, and um, and our foods locally. Uh, the training next live training is February 10th and 11th. This also involves a lot of online. Um, coursework as well. So if you can't attend that live training, you can still start the process. I'm going to do this regularly throughout the year. And we already have people who are happily engaged in, um, in business with us all over the country. We want to add to this. So uh, keep that in mind. I'm also offering a clinical skills mini workshop on February 16th, showing how we approach helping people get motivated to change, um, how to deal with the complicated client who has a lot of stuff going on. So that's coming up. And of course, I'm always available to talk to you one-on-one -on -one about your career trajectory. And um, at the very least, I can share with you our experience. We've been in independent practice always. We know how to do it. We've trained a lot of people how to do it. We can train you or you can pursue things on your own. But I can share some experience with you. And then don't forget our local stuff. Um, we have dinners and yoga classes and a Valentine's Day wine and dine coming up and cooking classes. And also, if you are playing with our foods, our dried goods in your kitchen, and you come up with a recipe that we post on the website, we'll send you a gift certificate, which you can apply to your next order of food. So if all of that interests you, send me an email at panpopper at msn.com. I have fascinating stuff to share with you today. Of course, I think all my stuff is fascinating, but if I didn't think it was fascinating, I wouldn't do this, right? So anyway, let's talk about the microbiome. And discussions of the microbiome are usually focused on the gut microbiome. However, your entire body is populated with microbiomes. For example, you have a microbiome in your eyes and in the lungs and on the skin and in the mouth. And we're gonna talk about uh, the mouth microbiome today. And diet affects the composition of all microbiomes, including the oral microbiome. And believe it or not, this has a lot of impact on your whole body health, including the regulation of your blood pressure. You heard me right. The bugs in your mouth actually impact your blood pressure. So here's how it works. Nitric oxide, or NO, is a vasodilator that is produced by the endothelial cells that line the blood vessels. So protecting and keeping your endothelial cells healthy is important for promoting cardiovascular health. And a lower fat, more plant-centered diet is better for this purpose, while higher fat, higher cholesterol diets are counterproductive because they're injurious to the endothelial tissue. But endothelial cells are not the only source of this nitric oxide. Bacteria in your mouth changes dietary nitrate into nitrite. Nitrite-rich saliva is then swallowed and enters the body where it is converted to nitric oxide. Research shows that blood pressure reduction is directly related to increases in nitrite levels. To further make the point, research shows that spitting out the saliva rather than swallowing it doesn't result in lower blood pressure, even when eating a lot of plant foods. Well, where does the dietary nitrate come from? Well, there was your clue, mostly fruits and vegetables. So a lower fat plant-based diet contributes to lower blood pressure in many ways. The dietary pattern protects the endothelial cells lining the blood vessels, which produce the nitric oxide, which keeps the vessels open and facilitates blood flow. In fact, according to a study in Okinawa, adding extra servings of vegetables to an already plant-rich Okinawan diet increased the production of endothelial progenitor cells, which are converted to endothelial cells that produce nitric oxide. And then eating more nitrate containing plant foods increases nitrite levels, which in turn increases nitric oxide. Now there's one caution that you have to be wary of, and that is that some mouthwashes can inhibit the effect. In a small trial in which subjects use chlorhexidine mouthwash for a week, the numbers of nitrate converting bacteria in the mouth were reduced and a small rise in blood pressure was observed. According to a researcher who's conducted a lot of research on this topic, Amrita Uluwalia, quote, increasing consumption of fruit and vegetables provides sustained blood pressure lowering, and I would like to suggest that it may be the nitrate content within that fruit and vegetable diet that is responsible for this. There have been a number of assessments showing that the DASH diet contains between 6 and 20 millimoles per day of nitrate, 
And we know absolutely that these kinds of doses will reduce blood pressure. So what you eat, you know, the saying you are what you eat, you really are what you eat in so many different ways. This is just one other example of the mechanism. More fruits and vegetables and plant foods are better. And that kind of brings me back to something I mentioned earlier, which is our fabulous dried goods that you can make into lots of different recipes. And some of the best ideas we've had came from our clients who were eating our foods, are eating our foods and making up their own recipes. And as I said, we'll send you a gift certificate if you come up with a recipe that we end up posting on our online um, set of recipes, which we're adding a lot to right now. So if you're interested in anything I've talked about, send me an email at pampopper at msn.com. Thank you for watching and I'll be back to you tomorrow with more news.